Brutality. Fatality. Oh, hell no! What's going on guys? Blazing here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And thank you for joining me on another Raid Shadow Legends video. Alright guys, so we have one of my most favorite champions. And I know I say this quite a bit, but he is an arena god tier nuker, right? Um, I really, really wish we could empower epics because this guy would just climb right at the top, right? Ignoring 100% defense if he's built properly and put with the proper team. It's just so, so crazy that this guy has just been allowed to be power crept. And, you know, I'm not seeing him played a lot in live arena. People are playing the Tarasas, people are playing, you know, the Rotoses. But this guy right here kind of, he can take them all on as long as he's got the right team. Now, yeah, we are really talking about one champion in particular, and it is going to be Mr. Inquisitor Shamel, right? We're talking about Blade 2.0. Marvel, please don't copyright strike me for using him. But man, this guy, the A2 is just so, so strong. Attacks one enemy three times, right? So triple hitter will ignore 25% of the target's defense, right? So automatically, we have a Helm Smasher built in. We'll ignore a further 25% of the target's defense for each buff on this champion. So if he gets three more buffs, he completely ignores 100% of the defense. So you have a 5,000k CV, guess what? Doesn't matter. Unless she's built with like 150, 200k HP, doesn't matter. You got a UDK that's got, you know, 6k defense, plus four, no problem. He's gone, right? The moment that stone skin is out of there, he doesn't stand a chance. Now, the best part about him is he is a big counter to Taraz, right? Places a true fear debuff on um, all allies if this attack kills an enemy, right? So he will actually be able to put a true fear out for you if you really need it, if you build him with some accuracy. I don't suggest it though, right? Now, let's talk about this passive. This passive is kind of like where he shines right we use them in hydra because of it they nerfed the um <laughs> they nerfed the mastery because of it right rather than adjusting him which is perfectly fine right especially now that taras is in the uh the game we all really kind of wish that they did leave this alone um but we got each hit each critical hit sorry fills this champion's turn meter by 7.5% so if you're using him with a Necrit, if you're using him with an ally attack, uh, if he uses his A2, he's going to gain extra turn meter, right? Every time he crits. Um, the second part of this is whenever an ally receives a fear or true fear debuff from an enemy, this skill will instantly remove the debuff, right? Fills this, al fills this champion's turn meter by 15%. Now this doesn't work the right way in Hydra. Apparently it's supposed to work that way in Hydra that it only boosts the first person but he boosts the 15% turn meter on himself, clearing off any fears and true fears, which basically gives you, you know, some extra stats that you can build them a little bit slower than you would your average nuker. Now, this directly counters Taras. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Right. I don't know how much more we can counter him with this champion. The A1 as attacks one enemy has a 50% chance of decreasing the duration of a random buff on the target. Obviously, you don't want to be polymorphed, so you're not going to build him with any sort of accuracy, right? Makes sense. Um, every time a enemy places a debuff on an ally, he's going to counterattack with the A1, but it will not be a critical hit, right? Because that would be absolutely busted if that happened, because he would just keep increasing his turn meter by 7.5 every percent, every time. Um, but what do we got? We got a total of eight books here, right? Uh, seven books here, sorry. Seven books here, three books here, total of 10 books. Every one of them is worth it, guys. Every one of them is worth it. So let's get into some live arena, and then I'll show you guys exactly how you want to gear your Inquisitor Shabelle. All right, so we've got Sniper. Let's see how this gentleman fares off. He's at 3478. Right off with the Sifi, man. Right off. It seems like in gold 2, Sifi is the one to have. I don't know. Maybe? Maybe not. Let's see here. 
Everybody's going with speed, speed, speed. We got Monkey King. Ooh, we got a five-star Harima. That, I mean, if there's anything scarier than a five-star Taras, it is a Harima. 100%. Maybe a, a Rodos. Maybe a five-star Rodos might be actually a little scarier. Or six-star. But, yeah. Um... Yeah, Harima is not fun. Alright, so that Sung Wukong is in a damage build, right? Let's see here. Let's go ahead and take out... I'm gonna go with... Kaimar. We're gonna take out his Sifi. The only worry I have is maybe that that Wukong is with some damage, uh, not damage, but with like 300 speed. Um, but uh, now that he took out my Taras, I'm not really concerned. Ideally now, best case circumstance is that we strip the stone skin from... Nice, okay. Let's go ahead, strengthen up, okay, um, let's take out the Harima, all right, boom, there we go, reset, he can only go after my Duchess right now. Which actually might be a problem if he uses the A2, right, and cheaps me. No, he strips buffs. Interesting. Okay. Um, looks like we're going to have to go with the A1, actually, because we can't do anything with that. All right, let's go ahead and cleanse that off now. Rodos, A2, boom, gone, finished. All right. Shamel coming in as a sleeper underrated champion, right? I mean, being able to make sure that you don't really care about a decreased defense or care about a, um, you know, any sort of damage reduction from the Savage or Lethal is just awesome. As long as you pair him with the right team, right? You need to make sure you have a minimum of three buffs, right? Um, plus one on him, so four, actually. He's going to automatically just ignore any defense the opponent has. All right, so we've got a damage dealing Sun Wukong. We have a Warlord here that's going to be high accuracy. So let's go ahead and go with this. Come on. I'm looking at... Okay. Elba can stay. Warlord, I think, is going to be my pick to go bye-bye. Harima. There's a lot... Why can't I get a Harima? Why does everybody else have a Harima and not me? It's like everybody I've gone up against today has a Harima. Was there some sort of, like, guaranteed Harima that I didn't know about? Okay, so we got Stultus, Harima. We, yeah, we're we're definitely going. I don't know. Will that Warlord have 300 plus? Could I risk it? We're gonna risk it. We're gonna ban the Elva. He took out my Taras. Perfect. So unless that Warlord's like some crazy 400 plus speed, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. 
Please don't tell me he just froze up on me. Okay, there we go. Took a while. Alright, we got Kaimar. Ready? Here we go. Boom. It's okay. We went to sleep. Veiled. Strengthen. Warlord. Goodbye. We got a fear out. That's beautiful. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead, monkey right there. Let's go, monkey A1. Goodbye, monkey. Now, Steltus can be a problem here. Right? If he comes in with that A2 and multi-hits us, we'll be out. There we go. That's fine. That is fine. Now he's going to go sheep my duchess. Watch. The question is, does he have enough accuracy? No. He took out my Marichka. That was kind of a dumb move, my man. Let's go reset. Uh, let's go Stultus. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it, guys. And we actually have our... Revive back up. Strengthen. Strip. Put the monkey back to sleep. Go night-night. Alright. There you have it. Let me show you guys the build. All right, so let's talk about how do you gear your Inquisitor Shemail? How do you want to build him, right? Well, first things first, his best set, he doesn't have one, right? You could make a case and argument for um, using stone skin, right? It does help. Anything that will give him an extra buff, especially if you don't have enough on the team to protect him, right? But using stone skin could work. Other than that, it's basically stats over sets, right? Currently, we have ours built with a crit damage and a speed set right because we need to be fast enough now we don't have refresh accessories on them but they would be great right as for stats what are we looking for well we currently have him built at 5.9k attack ideally i want to try to get him to as close as um 6.5 we can with some ascensions right now speed 231 right anything over 225 is going to work well for you especially in live arena right as for crit rate, you want 100% crit rate. Crit damage, we have him built with 329. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really not, right? Um, as for resistance and accuracy, you don't want any whatsoever, right? Now, let's talk about books. Do we want to book our Inquisitor Shamil? Yes. For this strat, for you to use him as an arena nuker, you do need him booked, right? Not bad. It's a total of 10 books, so you should be okay, right? Um, Phantom Touch is what we take for him, right? Being able to grant to get extra procs of that with the A3 is actually OP. Now, let's talk about Masteries. Masteries-wise, what did we do? Well, we took Flawless Execution. Now, remember, taking Helm Smasher does not help unless you don't have enough buffs on him. But if you're currently going to be able to have enough buffs, right, then taking Helm Smasher to be able to one-shot that Duchess or that Sifi is going to be key, right? Then we took Blood Shield, right? We took Cycle of, uh, Cycle of Violence, right? We also did take Retribution and we took Cycle of Revenge. You can take Delay of Death if you really wanted to, right? But it is what it is. Um, it does help, actually. So I really wish Deterrence wasn't nerfed, but, you know. <laughs> uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, guys. Are you going to be using your Inquisitor Shamil now? Is he somebody you're interested in using for your live arena matches? Again, people are getting caught off guard and not banning him, not realizing that he ignores 100% defense, right? So, as always, guys, much love, much appreciation. Be safe, be well, be good to each other, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.